almost exactly two years ago, I uploaded a video here to YouTube called AI is going to destroy the stock photography market and it's coming for your porn too. In that video, which came about nine months after ChatGPT's DALI image generator was released, I suggested we were at the beginning stages of nothing less than a seismic shift in the world of written and visual content creation. And in those three years since ChatGPT first broke cover, AI has become as commonplace and ubiquitous as Google. It steps straight out of the pages of fantastic sci-fi novels and into every single aspect of our lives. Seemingly every other week, there's some fantastic new AI model, an incredible new application for AI, and have a job that could be computerized, a form of creativity that can be automated, a skill that no longer requires humans. But this week, it struck me we reached an inflection point. The company that started all this have released a new image generation model and as you probably noticed from the tsunami of Studio Ghibli memes on the socials, it's breaking the internet. Has AI finally managed to tunnel its way out of uncanny valley? I, for one, do not welcome our new AI overlords. Before we get into this, I have an observation to make about generative imaging systems like ChatGBT's new model, and it's this. There are, broadly speaking, two different kinds of people in the world. There are the ones who look for the fakery, and there are the ones who couldn't give a flying fuck. And the simple fact of the matter is that the folks in the latter camp, the guys who don't give a shit, they were already being fooled by generative imagery two years ago. Have you seen that video, Will Smith eating spaghetti? It's fucking crazy. These are the people on Facebook who are hitting their love button. Uh, perhaps I should rephrase that. Who are hitting their like button on those stupid images of African kids modeling wildlife out of Pepsi bottles or Elon Musk as some Moses-like saviour with 14 kids gathered at his knee. I don't want to generalise, but typically the folks hitting that like button, the ones who seem to be most easily fooled, also seem to be the older demographic. Older than me, you cheeky bastards. I mean, I could be wrong though. People of all ages will apparently buy into any old ludicrous shite if someone suggests it's a truth they don't want you to know about. So the ship has already sailed for those guys years ago. By the time the generative imaging got good enough to render the Pope in a white Balenciaga puffer jacket, they were a lost cause. Critical thinking isn't dead, it's just been outpaced by the algorithm. But then there's the group of people who don't automatically trust everything that shat out of Mark Zuckerberg's fertile colonic canal into their news feed. Their first thought, when some fresh steaming bum nugget drops into the top of their timeline, is, is this authentic? They question who the original poster is, they question the accuracy of the story, and if it's an image of some kind, they question the authenticity of that. And right at the heart of the demographic of people questioning the fakeness of these photographs are photographers. We spend so long looking at photos, analysing them, thinking deep thoughts about them, that we tend to spot stuff that goes straight over the heads of the normies. Until recently, it was reassuring that AI was still easy to spot, at least for photographers or anyone else with a modicum of critical thinking. It was a bit like when Lisa Doll took a game of Go off DeepMind back in 2016. It felt there was still some hope for mankind. As long as we can still get one up on these systems, I figured, we weren't destined for either the destruction of mankind at the hands of Skynet or the fat stupid people in hover chairs in Wally. For the last couple of years, 
it seemed like these AI-generated images would fail to convince anyone that was bothering to pay attention. Stable Diffusion, Midjourney, Gemini, they all had that AI whiff about them, the uncanny valley look. Even if you couldn't put your finger on what was wrong with the image, you still felt it in your bones that something was off. But then, predictably, the technology improved. This week, OpenAI rolled out a new generative model, and it was just like the early days of generative imaging all over again. And while the entire planet got busy giving classic memes the Studio Ghibli look, I was much more interested in this image of four college-age kids. I'd be lying if I said that I would have given this a second look had it appeared in my feed on any of the social media platforms. The big tells with AI for me were as follows. One, the dead eyes and the blank stare. Two, that weird AI sheen. Three, fucked up anatomy. Four, the lack of noise and grain. Five, either completely emotionless or full on batshit crazy shit eating happy. Six, the smoothness, seventh, depth of field, and eight, weird shit going on in the background. Let's look again at that fake iPhone 6 photo. The dead eyes are gone. Yes, they all have quite dark looking eyes, but there's a glimmer of catchlight in the girl at the front. There's no sheen. The anatomy is excellent. I noticed a few things only after scrutinizing this image, namely, one, some weirdness on the girl at the front's neck. Two, is that a hand at the bottom center or the end of a scarf? And three, their teeth are all weirdly similar. But look at the way they're leaning into the frame and how the girl at the front is slightly better focused than the three behind. It has noise and grain that give it old iPhone vibes. It's not the right noise and grain, but the muggles will never ever notice this. They all have natural looking human expressions. Nobody's giving off Jim Carrey in the mask vibes. Smoothness is gone. Has a fairly realistic depth of field for a photo that's supposed to have been taken on an iPhone 6. That background is spot on. Looks like a hundred college campuses I could think of. The tree is excellent and the geometry of the buildings is bang on. The thing is, these images don't typically have to fall anyone for long. This image of Trump sprinting through a car park nails the face, but look at the handles on the bags, and why does his jacket look like it's being tugged by a string? Also, the last time this fucker ran anywhere, it was when he was a draft dodger. This one passes the three-second look test, but its lower teeth are a bit weird. This meme looks pretty good. The only thing that strikes me is how downturned his mouth is. In some cases, OpenAI have really stepped up their game. Look at the hair on this boy. Notice the flyaway hairs. Notice also the depth of field. Look at the color grade on this shot. Notice how the light is consistent on him and the boat. While the noise in this shot is more reminiscent of a video camera than a regular camera, it makes it look much more believable. I mean, ignoring the alien for a second. Has to be said, it's done a pretty good job on Donald Glover in this one. Notice how the fingers are anthropomorphically correct. Now accurate, the brand label is. There's some of that weird AI dimpling on his forehead, but again, it easily passes the three-second glance test. This one's generated a huge amount of interest due to the text. This is, of course, an area where all the generative models do spec spectacularly badly, but OpenAI's new model nailed it with this one. Even if the Golden Gate Bridge in the background does look like an early Dali attempt. For a while, the big problem with AI was that it was more real than real. Commerce is our goal here at Tyrell. More human than human is our motto. What gave those generative images away was the polish. They looked too shiny. The colors looked off. It's a bit like that scene in The Matrix, where Agent Smith explains that their early attempts to simulate the world failed because it was too perfect. It didn't work until they added misery and suffering back into the mix. In short, the imperfections are what sells an image. 
As I've demonstrated, this new Sora model by OpenAI addresses many of the long-standing complaints about AI, and it does so with a high degree of success. They're inching closer and closer to a formula that will allow for the generation of images that are indistinguishable from actual photographs. They're not quite there yet, but this model is significantly better than the ones that came before it, and exponentially better than the second-tier generative imaging systems like Adobe's utterly woeful Firefly. There are, of course, enormous ramifications for this technology and the speed with which it is developing. It's already heavily used all over the world by bad actors to feed into the echo chambers of the heavily online crowd. Synthetic protest images are everywhere. Fake war scenes are abundant. Deep fakes are used to subvert public opinion for elections. China have leveraged AI for the headshots of those fake social media accounts they use to push things like anti-climate change rhetoric. Nobody has a plan to combat this, and even if they did, there is no appetite to do so, partly because public discourse has been poisoned forever by big tech. When I first talked about AI on this channel back in 2023, I mentioned stock photography, and this new Sora model is surely the last nail in the coffin. Who in their right mind would use a photograph that sort of fits the requirements instead of a near-perfect fake image that precisely fits their requirements and which costs virtually nothing and which can be generated instantly at home or the office? Here's a graph generated, ironically, by Claude, which shows the share price of the big stock photo agencies. Adobe don't reveal what portion of their profits come directly from the Adobe stock collection, but their value, whilst faring better than most, is still heading south too. Everything starts going pear-shaped in 2021 when OpenAI released DALI to the world and the market said, yep, probably a good time to get out of stock photography. Getty Images' trajectory bears an uncanny resemblance to Blockbuster's slow-motion collapse household name watching helplessly as its business model crumbles beneath its feet. Canva has had its ups and downs over the years, but is currently valued at a staggering $49 billion. I realise they've started to include AI tools, but why would I bother with any of that design work when a brief text instruction gets me what I want? No clicking through templates, testing fonts, finding photos, or illustrations. It can all be completely automated. As impressive as the Sora generated model is, it's still flawed if you bother to look. Get stuff wrong, the images are also low resolution. But for the most part, these images pass the three-second whiff test, and in 90% of cases, that is all that will be required of them. And how about landscape photographers like myself? Have we been replaced by the machine? Here's a couple of shots of Torres del Paine National Park. One I generated in Sora, upscaled in Giga Pixel AI and graded in Nick Color FX. The other, I got a fun splash. Which is which? Can you tell? If you hadn't been there or were completely unfamiliar with this location, would you know one was a fake? Would you even care? Images like this that I generated using the prompt photorealistic image of Torres del Paine in winter will destroy whatever modicum of trust is left in photography. From now on, we pretty much only have the photographer's word that the photo they're sharing is the real deal. None of this will stop photographers, actual photographers, from going out and taking photographs, but the truth is that if someone wants to hoodwink us, they're going to do it. Most of the time, that deception doesn't have any consequences because, you know, it's just a share on the socials. But it's still a shame that this technology is forcing us all to question the validity of each other's work. Should we just let it Go and accept that a percentage, possibly a sizable percentage, of the photos that we see in our feeds and which we like and which we comment on because we admire them are going to be fake. There's definitely an argument for that, 
for letting it go because ultimately real photography is about so much more than the end result or anything as vapid as an internet upvote. It's about learning a skill, about being creative, about getting out into the world, exploring places, photographing actual humans or wildlife, spending time doing something other than staring at a screen and producing something you're proud of. These systems can approximate reality, but they can't live it. As John Donne said 430 years ago, be thine own palace or the world's thy jail. And that will do us for this look at the latest iteration of OpenAI's plan to destroy trust on a global scale. Are you in the, we can still use AI creatively camp? Or would you rather it had never been invented? Do let me know in the comment section below. Remember to check out my Substack linked below for my most excellent articles, which is supported by the legends in the paid tier. And if you enjoyed this video and got value from it, do hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel for more photo video and a drum related content from me. Till the next time, guys. Ta-ta.